Good morning and welcome to The Weekender. Slightly different to uh, previous episodes, as you'll notice there's a very small, uh, small absence in here. You hardly notice him, he hardly ever speaks during The Weekender. But uh, Warren isn't with us today. No uh, ming jokes, hurrah! What letter of the alphabet we brought to this? Uh... Oh no, we're on A, <laughs> don't! <laughs> no, we're going to save. So the, uh, the, uh, the alphabetical abuse of Justin will be, uh, be held over for a, a week or two. When, uh, when Warren's back with us, no doubt he will continue, uh, continue uh, uh, the abuse. No doubt he, he'll go for a double done in next week's episode and knock out two letters <laughs> just to keep it on track. Uh, I'm Stuart and uh, I'm joined by the, uh, the magnificent Justin, and, uh, who is the, uh, the staple, the, um, the mortar that holds together the bricks of Beast of War. In other words, I'm the editing monkey that's chained to a desk. Mine was slightly more complimentary, I thought. I know. Yeah, anyway, uh, welcome to The Weekender. For uh, Hopefully you guys are knee-deep in a bit of hobby or something like that, and you've just got us playing in the background. You get to listen to my dulcet voice. Um, la, 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 la. See, no, best I, best I don't go for singing. No, no, the, the, the dulcet tones come from Roman when he's doing the Three Colors Up tutorials. You know, just slowly hypnotising people as he... It is, it is. It's like, a, it's like some kind of... Sli- it's like Car, the snake from Jungle Book. Like, um, trust in me, trust in me. That's a great compliment. You do realise this. Close your eyes and trust in me as he's and painted away. suddenly we away. went off on a very strange tangent without Warren. So, first up, what's happening this weekend? Yeah, so you're, uh, you're off to Mantic shortly yes, after uh, here, once we're done with this. Lands. Mm. Uh, it's myself and Mike that are going up. Uh, we picked our two winners from last week, so congratulations to you guys. We'll see you there. Uh, my, myself and Mike are also planning to stay overnight on the Saturday, so you maybe get out for a beer with us. Fantastic. Exactly. In Nottingham, me and Mike, the place is going to burn. Well, yeah, not... Not, not too but, bad. I understand anyway. all the manufacturers have, uh, have backup facilities just in case Nottingham does burn, so that's, uh, that's fine. Well yeah. done. Yeah. But, uh, no, anyway, the, the Mantic Open Day actually sounds as if it's going to be really, really great. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually saw a little rumour floating about that uh, in the goodie bags they're giving away, there might be a couple of uh, vehicles hidden in amongst them, I think. Oh, the words, really? Uh, Yoten, oh, the Yoten Hel- Cannon. Oh, the, the big squat dreadnought. I think there, there's a little rumour floating about that perhaps one or two of the, the goodie bags might have one of those in them, so that'll be fun for somebody. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, other good news, mm. uh, our salute winners, your prizes have been mailed away. My so prizes? No, no, salute winners. Oh, okay. You, you work here, you can't win. I thought you'd sent my prizes to them. No, you, you work here, you don't get prizes. I work here, I don't get prizes. Sucks. Yeah, I know, it really does, guys. Uh, let's see, what else have we got going okay, on at Mantic? Well, tell me more about this Mantic day then. So, uh, well, there, there was talk of zombies. Yes, talk there's of... a zombie airsoft LARP, which is going to be great fun. An airsoft LARP? Yes. For those, for those that don't understand what those words mean, myself okay. included, okay. what? Right, you know what paintballing is? I paintball many times. Right, replace that with a BB gun. Yes, so that's airsofting. Airsoft. I have, I've airsofted once before. Okay, yeah. so that's that. Mm-hmm. And then you have a zombie LARP. LARP is live action role play. Yep. So, pretending you're a werewolf in a forest. Pretty much. Or in this case, pretending you are perhaps a, a military agent sent in to clear out and rescue some civilians in an abandoned medical center. <gasps> oh, so they're going to be basically going, oh, is uh, it? They, they've hired a professional crew to do it, so I'm expecting to see full makeup and stuff. Oh, so it's like a brains. <clears throat> Brilliant! That's that, that's a, that's a professional zombie as opposed to yeah, your, your run of the mill zombie. Yeah. No, but I am very tempted to see if it's if it's not too much hassle, I might see if they can set me down and do up a zombie Justin. Zombie Justin. What would zombie Justin look like? Like this after a twelve-hour day. That's you most days, isn't it? Exactly. You're here when I get here, and after I leave, you're still here. Yeah, I know. I know. She's worrying as I'm the key holder, but yeah, there you go. Do you right. never leave? Is that what it is? You know, I think if they could stick in a little flat for me, they would probably do it and just have me working 24-7. You, you know, a couple you... hours of sleep, back to work, a couple hours of sleep, back to work. You flatter yourself that Warren would invest in a flat. I'm thinking more of a, a mattress in a corner. Oh, right. Well, no, no. <laughs> would be my choice, you understand. He, 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 I'm might, he might actually just go for a little cage, you know, just to increase the abuse level slightly. Bring out the gimp. Oh, let's not go that way. Let's not go that way. Zed's dead. Okay, uh, so that's, that's quite cool. So you've got some weird zombie LARPing stuff going on. Yeah, we've you've got, got uh, the Dead Zone Alpha rules are going to be That's going to be fantastic. Yeah. I am getting a game of that regardless of what else happens. Even if I have to chain Jake Thornton to the table at the end of the day, 
No, we're not going that direction. And get a game of it. No, because I, I want to understand it, because it looks really cool, because you've got the nice play mats, the great terrain. I got, I got a chance to look at those play mats, because Jake and um, yeah. James Hewitt was up yeah, to do uh, some videos earlier. Yeah. Saw those mats, stunningly good. Such, such yeah. high quality. And that's just a prototype as well. Yeah, I know. Those things are going to be absolutely beautiful. And mm. if you think, if they make an entire range of those, it gives you something for every setting you could possibly have within the game. Yeah. Like, I know Jake is, is a big one for his uh, stories within a game. So I'm imagining this is going to have mission sections coming through it. Brilliant. Uh, I could be wrong. I could be way off base, but it's it's what Jake seems to do with all his games. No, I, th I think it's going to be great. Um, I think the narrative, I love the idea of, um, of, uh, of Dead Zone as well. Mm. I think the it's... It's a really clever idea. It's like a really nice slice into the Warpath world. Warpath is more of your kind of your your forty k setting, yeah, sort of grand yeah. space opera esque type yeah. thing. Yeah, but it, um, I think like other big games like that, it, it's going to take a while for it to achieve yeah. that huge critical mass. Well, look at uh, Kings of War. Mm. Uh, they're on their what third rule set now. Yeah, uh, it took them from first to third rule set for it to really bed in and become you know a game that knows what it is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so I say any game that's coming through it, give it until it's at least second, third set of rules to actually see what it's doing. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think also, though, again, I, I spoke last time about Mantic being really smart with the way they do the Kickstarters. Yeah. I like the way that, effectively, Dreadball and Dead Zone are slices into yeah. into the world and they're part of the world. It's not like, um, like Blood Bowl, in theory, was part of the Warhammer world, mm -hmm. but really, you know, it was... Yeah. It, you couldn't believe that actually they all play Blood Bowl. It was like kind of like a weird comedy mm. parallel world. Yeah. Whereas Dreadball definitely, definitely is part of the Warpath world. Yeah, I mean, like, and Dead Zone you is. You have concrete fluff reasons for it. Yeah. So corporations keep the teams on payroll or capture the teams or breed the teams to actually play the game. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's all just designed. Yes, it fits exactly into the world. This is not a comedy joke. This is a serious game. No, I, I think it's great. Uh, obviously... You're going to be having a look at the Mantic, uh, Mantic Open Day and getting lots of inside yeah, sneaky uh, peeks. I also will be having a little grudge match with uh, James himself. Will you? Because we've, we've been at bouncing... anything in particular or just like wrestling in no, the no, car no, park? No, no, no. Dreadball, dreadball. Oh, I dreadball. Basically, okay. we've been bouncing messages back and forward. Uh, I mentioned that I had my Jotunheim Ice Giants on the go. Uh, his reply was quite simple. You know, eloquent as you like. Oh, it's on. Oh, okay. So I expect to get a game on against uh, James. I'll see if I can... Get a little interview with him while I'm up there, mm -hmm. you know, just after the game, see how we got on. Uh, I think, if I remember right, we're also expecting to see Alessio up there as well. Brilliant. So, uh, while I'm up there, basically, myself and Mike are bringing a camera, so I'm going to do a walk around and just drop in randomly on each of them and try and get, you know, a little interview, see what's happening with them these days. You know, because little updates like that, it's nice with all the developers. Yeah, it is. And I think the Mantic Over Day sounds like a perfect place to get that done. Yeah, yeah, it should be really, really good. Mm. Uh, Let's see, what else is there really to say on that? I think that's about everything covered. So, key bit is, so you're going up there in a bit. Yep. You're going to be there all day. Yep. You're taking two winners with you. Well, you're not taking them with you, but you're going to meet them up yep. there. Yep. Uh, you're going to be staying for beers afterwards. Yep. So, anybody that's at the Mantic Open Day yep. and enjoys and bumps into Justin and that, just tag along. It'll be a, it'll be a exactly. good night. Just, you don't even have to ask. Just whenever we're done, just wait outside. I think uh, end I, of the day. I'd ask. I wouldn't just, I wouldn't just stalk him. Well... I like stalkers. Yeah. Jeez. What? No, no, the best thing <coughs> is a stalker. Yeah. You stalk them. Stalking the stalkers? Yes. Is that, that, that's like who watches the watchers. It's yeah. like who stalks the stalkers. Yeah. Me. Excellent. Anyway, on that note. Go. <coughs> yeah. So, okay. So that's the Mantic, uh, Mantic Day. Yep. And we, uh, as we said, so we had um, Jake and James were up here doing some bits yep, and pieces with Warren. Like, Warren's doing the Dreadball Academy at the minute. Dreadball Academy. Is, that's it. It's absolutely brilliant. The first one went out there on Thursday. Hour and a half long. So that's as long as some movies, I think. Yeah, yeah. So there's an academy, so it's effectively, it's teaching you how... Yeah, it's teaching you the game, teaching you the different teams, the different styles of play. Yep. You know, and having James there is a good laugh because he's reasonably funny on camera whenever he feels to roll and it's just that moment of, not again! See, when I was at school, we had, uh, obviously, had periods in the day. Mm. And I'm not talking about that time of life for a girl when... Yeah, no, but, you're, you're talking yeah. about the segmented classroom schedule. Yeah, absolutely. You see, Warren's not even here and we're doing pure old jokes. But anyway, um, so you look at um, half an hour. Mm. We had half an hour periods, basically. Yep. And um, so really, an hour and a half dribble 
academy, mm -hmm. that would be a triple, a triple period of whatever. Yeah. The only things we ever had triple periods of was um, we had triple period of drama. Okay. And triple periods of PE. Right. I'm pretty sure, though, if I had a triple period of dreadball, that would be much more exciting to look forward to in, in the week. Mm. Well, it's the one thing I noticed when we moved across here. All the schools over here have wargaming clubs mm. built into them. Yep. Back home, if you suggested that at a school, they would look at you as if you were half cut. You know, I was so shocked whenever I saw them over here. Yeah, I think that, I mean, I, I appreciate you, you're a little bit younger than me, but I think that the world, when I was growing up, certainly, people like Bill Gates and that mm. were, they were just starting to become famous. Mm. Well, yeah, they were just starting to put their mark on the world. And yeah, people uh, were first seeing them going, who is a strange little man with well, glasses? Well, I mean, I'm not that old, but, but, but certainly you had windows and things, but it was... Um, it wasn't the, the corporate juggernaut, or it was just starting to become that. So I think the world belonging to the nerds kind of thing was only just starting to happen. Mm -hmm. um, it was very much, pretty much the, the strongest, biggest people were the... Were yeah, the, that, the higher-ups yeah, yeah. and stuff, yeah. That's probably still true in schools today, mm -hmm. um, but um, Mike proves right and all that. But I do think that culturally... Things like war gaming and that kind of thing have become a little bit cooler. And computing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, there was a comp computer club at our school. Mm. Yeah. It was not the, the most kind of like... Um, so it was not the done thing. It was not high up on the social, on the mm. social ladder computer yeah. club. These days, well, I suppose these days you wouldn't even have a computer club because computers are prevalent. Yeah, they're everything. just everywhere. Everybody has them at home and connect or connect. But I think a gaming club of some description, I think is more acceptable. It's more mm. socially acceptable than I mean, it is still a bit, you know, it's still a bit um, yeah. niche. But uh, but I think it is much more socially acceptable mm. than maybe when we were. Plus, also you were at school in Northern Ireland. Yeah. So I'm yeah, assuming yeah, it was a little bit out of the way. Well, I was going to say just everything was like real hardcore and no, 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 no. It was just all the. Is it like Bally Kiss Angel where you grew up? I've never actually watched that show. But you, you you're aware of the idea. Yeah. I'm aware of the idea. Not exactly. Uh, basically, Ireland is Balamori kind of. No, no, Ireland is up to date and stuff. It's yeah, yeah. The the traditions and stuff are drag it back about ten years. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, uh, let's move on to the next segment, shall we? No, I was quite enjoying talking uh, about your damn it. your your yeah, child I you were, I, childhood I, days in Ireland. My childhood days when I had hair. Yes, it's true. I did have hair at one point. I know it would look weird. So when you'd look out your classroom window, would it be like um, like the fields, like Postman Pat? Yeah, yeah Postman Pat in no, Ireland, I right? I lived in Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, fine. I spent a lot of time in the countryside uh, so during my mid to late teens. Yeah. But that was just, you know, you didn't go out in your tractor for a day. But, so yeah, you, just to annoy the motorists. You say you were in then. So you weren't in, like, nowhere. You were... No, no, I wasn't in the back end beyond. No, well, there you I go, mean, then. Ireland's slightly more out of the way than England. What do you mean? All right, so... Ge ge geographically? Yes, geographically. What, if you're in England, it's right. Ireland is further away from you than... No, no, let's put it this way. Say, whenever we're doing this. Yep. When we were based in Ireland, uh, say we had someone coming over to do a theme week. Yeah. They would have to come to England and then go to Ireland. Do you see what I mean? So it's slightly more out of the way. So it's like, in England, we have this issue when going north to south right. is pretty easy. Right. East to west, much more difficult. In, um, don't ask me why. In terms of um, I, I'll traffic and transport, to do with the road layouts. Yeah, uh, transport is is easier north and north to south mm. than it is east to west okay. in, in the UK. Just is that is the way it's laid out. I'm sure somebody will comment as to why it is. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, so that was the Mantic Open Day. So we're not going to we're not we're not going to talk any more about Ireland. No, I think we're going way, way off base here. Okay, okay. Let's talk about uh, let's yeah, talk about something else then. You know, everybody out there is probably sitting there going, "What are they rambling about?" Right. I'm here for my toy soldiers. Then let's talk about another weird magical island. All right, Ulfan with the high elves. Yes, high elves content is coming soon. Uh, I'd say soon because we're not putting a definite date on it because basically filming schedules and stuff are all over the place at the minute. So the plan is we're going to have Mike, uh, who you'll have seen. In unboxings, sitting on, on demo games and stuff. This is Mike that's going up to the Mantic Day with you. Yep. Uh, then we're also going to have your buddy Gav. Yeah, we, 
these guys know Gav. Yep. He's done about 300 videos recently. <laughs> And then we're going to have your buddy Andy, who has done one video, I think. Uh, I think he's done a couple. Uh, he usually uh, usually beats me in various games of various things. Ah, yes, I remember. When we first moved over, yeah. he hammered your... Uh, what was it? It was the War Machine game you played against Andy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. I, I, I lose most of my games. I'll be honest, I lose most of my games to most people that so I play. I, but you still yeah. play because it's fun. Quite, yeah. But uh, no, Andy's, Andy's a great guy. He and I have... Um, Long had uh, long had a battlefield rivalry where mm. um, particularly my favourite army in Warhammer. Mm -hmm. Have a guess. For you, I'm going to say Dark Elves. Hey, spot on. Yeah, yeah got it. Dark Elves. Love Dark Elves. Love everything about Dark Elves. Uh, Andy, massive High Elf fan, which mm. is why he's going to be perfect for the Warhammer and yep. um, for the High Elf coverage. Yep. Uh, as Andy starts getting back into the High Elves and getting really excited about them. Mm. Naturally, the arms race will continue, and I'll have yes. to get into uh, I'll have to get in some dark elf dark elf action. Yeah, no, 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 I mean, like I am planning to get a dwarf army at some stage, like, uh, but I don't know when, don't know how, but eventually I will have one on the table, and I will get a game against you. Little bird tells me that yeah. uh, dwarfs may be getting uh, an ah, update yes, uh, from GW at some stage. In yes, the there, there was uh, one line within the the new High Elves book that sort of tipped the hat slightly to it about uh, their magic items. Dwarves don't do magic items, or do they? Well, they make their own magic items because they have runes and things. Yes, but it's the rune that's magic, not the item itself. Yes, I, I think that's. Yeah, okay. I'm not exactly sure how it works, guys. I'm sure someone out there who knows all is an the expert in in, uh, in dwarven rune rune smithing. Yes. Um, Speaking yes. of, uh, we're going to go for another tenuous link here. So speaking of Dark Elves and yeah. High Elves, so obviously you're going to have the High Elf, but they're going to break it down the same way that the Tau have been broken yeah, down. Yeah, we'll have the, the breakdown. So yep. it'll go Special Rules, Magic Items, yep. Heroes and Lords, mm -hmm. Core, Special, Rare. So you'll have one each day. Fantastic. Yep. The lovely models now out with the High Elves. Yes, yes. One of the things is the Dark Elves, my boys, had an update, not, not a codex, but they had a wave of stuff come out um, around the time of um, Storm of Magic. Mm -hmm. So we're going back a, a couple, fair little couple, junk. Mm, yeah. couple of years, I think. Um, now, one of the things that came out was the Dark Elf Dragon, yeah. which personally I'm not a huge fan of. I think it's okay. Mm. I like the rider, and I like parts of it, but I just felt that the head was very... Um, <clears throat> Ray Harryhausen, that kind of weird snaggle tooth kind of, um, yeah. almost looked like it was made of claymation or something. And um, rah, kind so of. Unfortunately, speaking of Ray Harryhausen, he's uh, actually passed away. Uh, sorry. Okay. That's, that's uh, sad, recently? He, yeah. Uh, it was in the, the news stream, I think, a couple of days ago. 92 years old, so I mean, like, it was a fair age of a man, and he's one of the legends of the movie industry. Uh, most people will remember him from Jason and the Argonauts. Oh, well, I tell you what, speaking yeah. of what would be, and I mean this with the greatest respect, uh, but it's kind of cool. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if for the funeral, mm. as he's being carried then, yeah. yeah, the coffin's just there, just sitting there on a platform, and then somebody comes out, opens a little bag of dragon's teeth or whatever, throws them on the ground, skeletons rise up out the ground as pallbearers and then <laughs> and then carry his coffin into the church that would be fantastic um yeah. might scare everybody else or um yeah. although a lot of our younger viewers won't know exactly what that is so shall i find the clip for them you can do that of course i can do that i'm a wizard
Well, there you yeah. go. Okay. See, your sorcery, your your cinematography, and yeah. your uh, your technical magic is is getting more and more powerful with each passing. You're a little bit like Anakin, aren't you? you each, each each passing day, at the moment, you're still being played by um, who was a little lad. Um, um, what's this? Uh, Jake Lloyd. So at the moment, you're still being played by Jake Lloyd okay. as as Anakin Skywalker. Okay. Eventually, you become Hayden Christensen. <laughs> And then, uh, uh, and, and then David Prowse later on. But uh, <laughs> you, you are getting there. You yeah. I see. I think it's just as the beard grows, it gives me strength. It, it, you know, is that, it's actually is that really annoying. Warren at the minute, up in the office, whenever I, I start playing with this thing, you know, stroking it menacingly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Anyway. Um, anyway yeah. So that was that. That's cool. So that's, that's a shame he's done because mm. his stuff was. Um, yeah. It was... I think his mark on on gaming in general, I think, is is huge. I think things like the Dark Elf. I mean, the Dark Elf Dragon, as much as it doesn't float my boat, I can at least see where it kind of connects in with the War Hydra. It had that kind of real snaggly, let's say that that slightly claymation animated -y style about it. Um, really, really cool um, as a design idea, and certainly Harryhausen stuff in the past, fantastic. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. Oh, yeah. that's a. That's it's, a that's a shame. It's, it's that's a shame. One he's of the gone. legends has died from the world of movies and stuff. But. Yeah, but then again, you know they they pass on pass on their uh, their yeah. knowledge and wisdom to the next generation. Yeah, and, and then uh, the next generation does the same again. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, world. A, not a bad not a bad thing overall. Yeah. yeah, but no, very sad. But um, he's left his mark, I think, on on the yeah. world. Yeah. Well, I mean, like he'll always be remembered. So what more can you want from than that? Well, speaking of um, leaving Mark on the world and mm -hmm. uh, be being remembered, right. so um, again, tenuous link, okay. Hayden Christensen, yep. David Prowse, Star Wars. So All we right. had Star Wars Day um, last weekend. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Really, really, really good day. Yeah, you got it in your Jedi gear. I did get my uh, I did get my Kenobi on. Um, I had a, a Gav was very uh, very kindly lent me a, uh, a his his, his, his custom made expensive um, yeah Jedi robe that he had specially tailored for him yes. by uh, which by Jawas. Wore, which if I remember he wore once for a stag do and that was it. No 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 he wore it at Halloween at mine one time and ah, right. uh, he uh, he had a lightsaber duel with uh, also in costume was Ben Prager right. who is the Manager of Games Workshop Blue Water. Oh, Aha! Right. Something to mock him over. But yeah, uh, and he and Ben had uh, kind of a lightsaber duel out in my garden uh, in the dark. Nobody else was there. Just, can, can just I people mocking him from the windows. Amount of alcohol involved. Uh, by everybody else, yeah. No, it's, <laughs> no, no, no. It was 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 kind of cool. But now, Gav, um, I probably got incriminating photographs somewhere. But anyway, if you find them, uh, then we'll see them. If not, we'll leave it alone. But anyway, Star Wars. Yep. So the part of Star Wars Day. And it was, um, it was something we did here at Tabletop mm. Nation. We had the regional heat or regional uh, championship, sorry, for um, Star Wars the card game, which went really, really well with our yep. friends at Rot Dog, Rot Dog Games. That was cool. Yep. We also did uh, the regional championship for X-Wing. Uh, that was fantastic as well. We had some really, really cool... We had Millennium Falcons getting hit by iron cannons and escorted off the table. Yeah. We had the final game of the, um, of the championship was stunningly good. It, by the end of it, it was the last game running. Yeah, you had... Uh, we gave them special dispensation in the, uh, for their last table because they hadn't reached a satisfying conclusion. We gave them an extension on their time so and both guys were up for it and they continued the battle. And you had, effectively, mm. everybody else in the event was clustered around the table watching, watching this it. game. Ah, it was awesome. really, really cool. Awesome. Um, in the end, um, the... Uh, was it the Empire of the Rebels that carried the day? Uh, it was the Empire that uh, the Empire that carried it with um, copious numbers of TIE Fighters. Ah. Um, but, the, um, but as I say, mm. really, really good... Um, there's a lot of photographs and things to be, uh, be online. There's a report on it. Mm -hmm. Really, really good event. One of the key things though, that came out of it was that they've announced wave three of X-Wing. So at the moment, yes. you've had the first two waves. Yep. So in the, with the original core game, yep. uh -huh. you've also then had the TIE Fighter, the X-Wing, the Y-Wing, and TIE the TIE Advanced. Yep. Um, those are the, that's, that's wave one. Yep. You then had wave two, which introduced um, the TIE Interceptor and the A-Wing, and then the first two large ships, yep. which is the Millennium Falcon or the YT-1300, the yep. freighter. Yep. And the... Um, Slave One. Slave One, which I think is the uh, is a fire spray... 
yeah. patrol ship. Yeah. Now, last week you actually called three of them. Well, oh, yeah. Indeed. They've announced now Wave 3, and they announced it live during Star Wars Day we had at Tabletop Nation. Yep. And, uh, and, yep. and um, so the three they announced, so they announced th um, three that we, uh, we you're right, we, we guess, all called yep. on the day. So the B-Wing. Clearly, uh, simple yep. choice. Thai Bomber. Simple choice. The Lambda Shuttle, so the Imperial Shuttle, that's a large ship. Uh, yep. All three of those look stunningly good. Mm -hmm. I hear that the Lambda Shuttle's wings rotate. I have seen pictures of them down and up. Fantastic, so that's that's very cool. Mm -hmm. And also that the B-Wing is on a... What, a pivot? So you can it, it has a pivot, so oh. you can actually rotate the ship to the side. Oh. So that's kind of... That's kind of I believe, you know, and if it isn't, that'll be a very... That'll swift be, conversion for yeah, people yeah at the moment it's, it's flying in its um yeah it's in its flight mode upgrade, rather yeah. than its attack position where it would go sideways yeah um so that's all cool so we called all of them the one we didn't call the surprise one yeah the the fourth one which we were scratching our heads over yep they've announced and it's the moldy crow which is from dark Star Wars. uh yeah from um, jedi Wars. knight uh, no, no, not, oh, not from Force Jedi Unleashed, Knight, from sorry. Jedi Knight. My yeah, apologies. Carl Katarn's um, right. ship, yeah. which is kind of cool. It's 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 like midway I've, between a fighter and a freighter. I've heard one or two people actually say that it's perhaps slightly off scale. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'm sure we'll see it, when we get the. I'm sure. Down. I'm sure it won't be because they're, they're they're pretty good at, at mm. their scaling on it. Yeah. Um, I think maybe we just thought it was larger in the game. Um, but it's yeah. It's it's basically it's a. Slightly bigger than a starfighter sized freighter, mm. yeah. so it, it, it's a little like a little courier ship kind yeah. of thing. Um, what's really cool about it in game, it's got some really cool benefits. Mm. Um, I just think it's a nice little addition to mm. your fleet, it doesn't always have to be, yeah. uh, loads and loads of starfighters and things. I think it adds, same as the Lambda Shuttle, I think you can start doing you could do scenarios now. I mean, I'm going back, yeah. I don't, if, and some of you will remember, yeah, you so, could do Imperial Convoy scenarios, yeah. Well, you did, um, back in, back in the day, you had X Wing and TIE Fighter, the uh, the computer games, mm -hmm. and um. I remember as both that there, there would be missions where you'd have a shuttle that was maybe travelling between, or it was hyperspacing in, and then it had to get um, get to a planet or get, and you had to either they were going to get attacked, and so you were escorting it, or it was being escorted and you were attacking and trying out trying to take yeah. it out. But either way, uh, things like the shuttle, things like the Moldy Crow, things like the Millennium Falcon are going to make really great scenario pieces. Yeah. Now I think that's going to start to open up, yeah. open well, the game I know up. Myself and Lloyd are planning to pick it up now because. Uh, we all know Lloyd, he's one of the masters of creation in here. Mm. You know, he does so many beautiful things, but he barely gets a chance to game. And this is one of the perfect games for him to pick up because it's no work, out the box, on the table. Let's play a game in, what, 45 minutes? Yeah, that, that's true. We saw, again, at the tournament, and I'm sure you guys have probably seen at home or at uh, your local clubs, with stuff like X-Wing, you can, if you want to, you can pick up the model and you could repaint some bits if you wanted you can, to. But, but those paint jobs are excellent. Those paint jobs are flawless. Mm. And the actual material that they're made out of takes the details so, so well. Yeah, uh, Fantasy Flight, I think I've done a cracking game with X-Wing. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing the Wave 3 the Wave three stuff as it comes out. I think it's a little way off, though. I think it could mm. be September before we see it on the tables. But um, Yeah, but when it comes out, everybody's going to want it. Oh, yeah, well... I will. I think we're already taking pre-orders, and I think it's uh, really yeah it's going nuts already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads <laughs> of people wanting it, so um, right. so that's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that that's um, that that's all quite cool. So Star Wars is, um, I think X-wing is here mm. certainly for the foreseeable, and with those yeah. add-ons, I, I, I agree with yeah. you. Well, if, mate, with if you the haven't played the expanded it, universe, yeah, that, it gives them so much more mm. to actually draw from. You know, for if, different ship types and things. If you haven't given it a go, though. Um, just get somebody to show you most people that own because when you buy it uh, when you buy the actual game you get two tie fighters and an x-wing so people even if people have just got a rebel fleet or they've just got an empire fleet in all likelihood they've probably got a couple of ships of the other side knocking yeah, about or at least one yeah yeah so go over to them pester them get them to show you how to play it mm. i'm fairly confident you'll like it yeah and then get into it because I, th I think it's a really really great game yeah really well, I mean, great x-wing's one of those games it's done incredibly well for itself yeah how I know that, I've seen it sitting in Waterstones. As soon as a game like that that's in a niche gets into a mainstream store like that, mm. you know it's made it. You know it's going to be here for ages and ages to come. Yep. Now, there's one other game I want to chat about. Oh, yeah. Now, I've just saw a little peek of it uh, earlier there. Privateer doing a uh, deck building card game. 
called oh, High Command. High Command, yes. Yes, I think this is going to be very fun because it's going to give you another way to look at the, the World of War machine. Mm. So instead of actually playing the battle out on the table, it's more the strategy side of things uh, further okay. back down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're building the entire army. So you could cool. have, instead of needing gigantic amounts of mini and gigantic tables, you can have your gigantic army with all the cards, which I think will be really, okay. really cool. I'm sure being, I mean, Privateer Press, famous for Hordes and War Machine, but actually the Bodger games are really good fun. They've yeah, done lots and lots of, lots of, Grind's quite good fun. They've done lots and lots of little spin-off spin -off games. I have and Grind, things. but I've never actually figured out how to play. So if you know how to play, yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll get a game in. Yeah, yeah cool. definitely. Cool. Um, again, I mean, Grind, you see, is one of those ones where, like we were talking about, the, bet, the great thing about Dreadball, it, it's mm. in the setting. Grind, nominally, nominally, it's kind of, inspired by but it yeah well you don't really have grind arenas lo knocking around the iron kingdoms or anything it's not no no it's, yeah. it's more of a, a fun thing that they've just took out the side yeah. and they've committed heresy by making cute or light jacks but if it's not properly part of the exactly yeah, you yeah. can't get away with it but it's a good fun game Property press um are a game studio i think sometimes we we forget that when we look at particularly these companies that have got very large ips like 40k yeah. or what have you and 99% of their output seems to be in line with that particular product yeah when you do suddenly get this spin off this oh what's that and it's yeah. quite usually the pedigree the skills they've got in making sure that their their main products are great across to the smaller really ones, yeah. translates well and in this particular instance i'm confident that high command is going to be excellent yeah there's uh, another one they did uh, aeronautica imperialis who, Private for, Press? No, no, Games Workshop. Yeah. Swampy brought it in one evening. Yeah. I was so impressed at how well that little game ran. Well, the great thing about Aeronautica, that's uh, Forge World. So, again, oh, they've right, got... Uh, well, no, it's just, you, no, you're right. It's Games Workshop. It's okay. the same... Um, yeah. <laughs> just Overall, a, di just yeah. a different hat they wear. Um, but, yeah, again, another another good example of, um, of game balance. And these people, all these big studios, they just live and breathe gaming. You know, yeah. they, uh, Monster Apocalypse, we talked about that a few... Um, yeah. Maybe a month ago now. Um, again... Really smart little game mechanic. I, I think it was a, a marketing issue, probably mm. sunk it rather yeah. than actually the quality of the game itself. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so anyway, as I say, um, I'm I'm will definitely be picking that up. That sounds yeah. that sounds a great. I'm assuming it's War Machine to start and then Hordes to follow. Uh, yes, it's only doing the War Machine factions at the minute. So yep. you'll have Signar, Kedar, Menoth, Crix. I think is the ones they have in it now. And you'll be crying with no retribution, but there you go. Don't have, though, is the brand spanking new one that's just coming out now, the Convergence. Yeah, Convergence of Cyrus. Yes, I've actually had a look at some of their new stuff. It's looking very, very mm. pretty. Very yeah, I want, I want the Clockwork, I want to see the Clockwork Angels. I think they're yeah. going to be quite cool. Yeah, although, I, like everybody else, I'm at least going to pick up the Battle Box just to get a feel for how the faction plays. I'll pick up the book. I probably... For me, as I know I'm not going to collect them, mm. uh, I probably won't buy the Battle Box. Right. I'll definitely get the book in hardback because yeah, I'm, well, well, I'm, you know. I'm a book snob. Um, because usually I have, because I use um, War Room to actually play, mm. I'm, I'm one of the few, um, so I don't need a book yeah. that I'm going to keep flicking through. I want a book that's going to look lovely on the shelf. I'll yeah. read through, enjoy it. Yeah, and then, enjoy the fluff, enjoy yeah, the story. And then on the shelf, thank you very much, I have that should I ever want to go back and read the stories or something yeah. like that. But for actually day-to-day -day play, I don't need the hardback book stretched out on the yeah, table on the to table play. Side, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's, um, no, looking forward to that, though. Mm. Really am looking forward yeah. to it. Well, I think it's about time for us to move on because I need to be heading up to Nottingham shortly. If we're lucky, guys, we will get back for an XLBS. If not, sorry, next week. Do you want to just briefly, though, talk about our... Uh, our coasters, as we're talking about War Machine. Ah, yes, I forgot. Uh, you're probably wondering what we're doing here. This is what's happening I'm not wondering week. what we're doing here. I know what we're doing. I'm talking to the people at home. Hello, people at home. Hello! Yeah. Anyway, my coaster has been the Mammoth. Mammoth. And now, you see, the Mammoth... This is we the can't, Colossal for Scorn. Can't hold it up to the camera because you're not going to see it. But mm. if you ever get the chance to go in... If, you haven't, if you're not a Scorn player yourself... Uh, if you ever get the chance, have a look. The paint job's nice on the art, but actually the bit that's fantastic, if you can get hold of the model itself, mm. the facial expression the actual, on the resin, the actual right. facial expression on the mammoth is stunningly good. Nice. The, the emotion in it is, is, mm. is amazing. Similar size box, though, to mine. Now, you look at that, and you, you guys are seeing Legion of Everblight and the Horde logo, and you're going, oh, he has an archangel. 
Uh, no, I'm saying Battle Box, perhaps. Oh, yes. The size of the box. Yeah, yeah, it is slightly, slightly, smaller. slightly thinner. Not a Battle Box. No. It's Lilith, the new, uh, the new Lilith. Now, again, I understand you guys are going to be getting an unboxing of this. Uh... We have an unboxing. The Mammoth, you'll see Lilith. Fantastic. You'll see Macadra and her exalted court, and you'll see Hunter's Grimm. All the really, um, all the really, really cool, uh, cool gargantuan models. This yeah. one looks stunningly good, though. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's, it's all, the first, all metal. It's all metal. Mm. It only actually takes up half the box. Mm. You know, they've designed it that cleverly. It takes up half of this box. So yep. down that line there, you'll have your base, everything, all the metal bits in the other side. I think it's going to be great. Although I'm very tempted to offer to paint one for Mike and just paint it in red and white. Yeah, it is a little bit Santa Slay. Uh, it's my only, my only criticism of it mm. isn't the design of it per se, but because it's got runners on it, mm. it is kind of dictating to you what terrain really you should be basing your, mm. your models on. Yeah, it. it should be a winter base, yeah. you would imagine. Although, I mean, like, I can't imagine it being done just on a field base where it's just scrying through the, the fields, raising up divots. Yeah, it could do. I mean, I, I, I quite like the idea, potentially, and this is a bit of heresy now, mm. in removing or potentially um, altering the the uh, the runners on there. Yeah. And there's a lovely range of uh, just to show that we're not we're not beholden to anybody. A game zone do a lovely range of uh, dark elf here we go dark elf models. There we go. And they have a chariot on there with some really nice wheels on some yeah. really kind of el uh, dark elfy kind of spiky looking cool wheels. Yeah. Actually, some kind of hybrid of them. So actually, the chariot is on. Or the sleighs on wheels. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even just even just a pair of wheels being pulled by those, I think that would look really cool as well. Yeah, would well that not sort of giving it give it the uh, the Narnia look at that point for the the Frost Queen? Did her sleigh have wheels? Whenever it came to the final battle during summer, it did. If I remember right from the movies they made. Well, then they're very very sensible. You mm. give it wheels. Okay. So that's one for you guys. If you want to convert it for. An actual forest base or send, something. Send us your pictures. Zone. I'd love to see it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Basically, I'd love to see what people are going to do for converting with all of these. Mm. Although, you see the mammoth. You see the giant size of the head on it. Yep. I Orange on a, a toothpick. I think a lot of people are going to need to magnetize that. Just so, that, you know, for convenience of sake. So, when you're going into combat, pop the head off. You can get it in base to base. Oh, I see. That's a good idea. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just instead of having to turn it arse end on and back it in and say, actually, I'm facing that way. You can just pop the head off, slip it in, job done. Another way, though, would yep. be if you build up the base underneath. So actually, the mammoth is like kind of coming up, mm. up on a rise, which yeah. then, because all you have to do is just lift those tusks above yeah, Thagrosh's head height, kind of yeah. thing. You're, uh, you're yeah. laughing. Yeah, well, another possibility, another idea. Right, so shall we close up the show? Uh, yeah, have you got any winners or anything to announce? Uh, actually, yes, we do, because uh, our show notes were folded. Slightly wrongly. Uh, we have the winner of the Ultra Forge Demon. Mm. So the competition was, it was pick one of the three. Yep. So we had the Varrock, the Greater War Demon, and the Demon Prince. Fantastic. Three beautiful, fantastic mm, minis. Lovely, lovely models. I could not pick which was best to give away, so I told people to pick themselves. Okay. So our winner is Greyfire Soul, and you've won a Varrock. Do you think his parents gave him that name? Greyfire Soul? It could be worse. It, called, it could be called uh, Tallulah Does the Hula in Hawaii. Is that the Sussex Fire Souls, do you think? Or is that the... I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Or that, is that the Canadian Fire Souls? You know, I, don't, you know, I, I think, don't know which branch of the family no, they are. No, you see, now I'm thinking on it, perhaps it's his username. Oh, okay, yeah. Could, mm. could be. Slightly slightly bo more boring, to be <laughs> fair, but yeah. Cool. Well done, Mr. Mr. Fire Soul. Yeah, that will be on its way to you as soon as you get your prize claim in. Don't forget, it's up on the top right corner on beastofwar.com in the drop down. There? It's that way. There? That way. There? That way, yeah. Because don't forget. I can't, I can't read it upside down. I, I, I apologise. I can. Cool. Anyway, thank Bye. you very much. And we'll, uh, we'll catch you anon. Bye-bye.